not to get into the, the long technical explanation of it um some of you have been watching for a while now i have been having constant Nine. issues with my Nine. upstream like Nine. being uh internet i probably shouldn't say Nine. so much because i've got to bleep out every Nine. time i say Nine. in the Nine. bit before the yeah fucking... Nine. quit it you're gonna have to Nine. bleep every night one like I'm, later me is gonna be sitting there on 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 premiere going you son of a stop it later use problem just to, to explain the simple way i f i think i fixed it myself really? except it's not a me issue which is weird um you got your little modem and the cable yeah. modem and in order to upload things it has to actually scream down the cable line says hey i'm sending something now but it's got a little tiny yeah it's got a little tiny Arr. voice yeah, it's a little yeah. it's a little box about this. It's a little tiny voice. So what they do is they put amplifiers on your cable lines that make that little signal louder so it can go all the miles it needs to to the hub and the node and then go off to the Internet. But the cable modem judges how loud it has to be. Based on the it's it's it's, it's decides what power level it needs to be, and they've got They've got it out of whack. And the cable modem thinks, I don't have to be that loud. So what you do, and this is a stupid thing, but it worked. I don't know how long it's going to stay working, but it worked. You take a cable splitter that they give you. Like if you get the self-install kit or something, you get like a splitter that takes your cable line and you know, sends one into two. You take the cable splitter, you put it between the cable modem and your regular cable line. You don't even have to hook anything up to the other side of it. And that acts as a signal attenuator, which means your cable modem thinks, oh no, I have to be louder now. I'll be louder, and it works. And and now because it's louder, they're screwed up amplifier and Nine. they're like, oh, okay, I hear you now. Haven't had any packet loss or trouble. How stupid is that? That is pretty stupid. It's, I mean, not, your, your, your solution is genius, but... It's the, what's what's happening here is I'm slapping a band aid on their screwed up uh, line yeah. maintenance, and I don't know. The, the Nine. thing is, if they fix it, I'll start having problems again. I'll have to take that splitter off. I'll so you fishing <laughs> wire and bubble gum that motherfucker. <sighs> Good job. So anyway. That would not occur to me. Man, I'll tell you what, nothing will make you an expert in, in cable internet engineering faster than having to deal with problems on their side of it. Because you will learn to fix all the shit on your side. You will do every god. Nine. You will do the hokey pokey and turn yourself around. With all that out of the way, let's actually, because we do have some sh stuff tonight that I'm not entirely sad. Not entirely saddened by this week's. We, we do have some generally just what the fuck. Let's get the intro going, shall we? Let's see. Each week, Catherine, ready to your audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong? And, um,. This fucking guy on our first story is <sighs> in this fucking guy. When you read everything going on here, I, I, I'm looking at what he did and I'm, I'm, I, I, you know what? I lied. I'm a little sad. Just look at the pictures in this one. Florida Ford GT owner crashes because he's quote unfamiliar with manual transmission. And this is, here, let me get the picture up here because you're about to be sad, everybody. I'm, I'm sorry. You're all, even if you don't even give a shit about cars, you're going to look at this. Oh. Because paint job needed a smashing. Uh, okay, the paint job's not the best. But that car, though. Like, you already totaled that car with the paint job. <laughs> the crashing it was just, a cherry on top. It's like if the Milano from Guardians of the Galaxy meets Herbie the Love Bug. Yeah. 
poor car. That's poor car. Ford GT owner in Boca Raton, Florida, crashed his recently purchased supercar into a tree Friday evening because he was, quote, unfamiliar with how to drive stick shift. The driver, 50-year-old Robert J. Guarney, uh, told police he lost control after downshifting while leaving his housing development around 6 p.m. This led to a head-on collision with a palm tree. Guarney then told nearby security workers he did not have his phone and needed a ride ride back to his house. He spoke to authorities via landline after leaving the vehicle. All right, let's start. First part. He does not know how to drive stick. That's 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 part one. But he bought a car. Yeah. With a stick transmit. Like, yeah. I don't know how to drive a stick. limited edition one too, a rare so one. So I wouldn't buy that fucking car. But wait. Let's see. Um, let's see, where where is it? Where's his insurance? Because he was, let's see. Find the word in there. Because I know. Yeah, there it is. Where, where's the word? Uh, though police say the car was not registered or insured when the crash occurred. Barney claims the car was covered in, under an umbrella policy that he just didn't have the documentation of vehicle when the crash happened. On my phone. I have it on my phone now. I don't even have to print this. Sh- I love that, though. I don't have to print those yeah. fucking cards out anymore. I'll have to wait for them to mail them to me. I've got it on my phone. But wait. 50 in my glove box, because I would never take out the old one. And I'd have to go through all of them trying to find the one that wasn't expired while the cop got increasingly annoyed with me. But wait. Warney was issued a citation for driving with a suspended license. The 50-year-old claims his license suspension was due to an unrelated Department of Motor Vehicles clerical error. So, never learned to drive stick, no insurance, no license, and you go out and buy. Insurance, just like not with me. <laughs> and that license thing, that's the DMV's fault. You and go- um, the manual transmission, my dog ate it. <laughs> Go out and buy this super expensive fucking rare car, and you goddamn total it. That is seven hundred and four thousand dollars he paid for that car. Seven hundred and four thousand dollars, a two thousand six Heritage Edition GT Ford GT. The uh, that that fucker's total. Just look at that. Look at that. Buy a car you can't. You don't know how to drive for almost a million goddamn dollars. Yeah, like I don't a stick. I'm buying that fucking car. Like, well, I mean, you know, it's cool. I was unfamiliar. Yeah, really. Is it cool now? Also, here in I'm going to get some hate for this. Here in the year of our Lord 2022, I do not understand nor appreciate the need. For a manual transmission for a road vehicle. Okay? If if I have to, if I am driving from point A to point B in suburbia, in a city environment, on a highway, if I'm not going nowhere, I'm just going to the store. Why the fuck do I need a manual transmission? But you have more control and you can no, why do I need I just need to go there to there? I'm not fucking common, as I understand it in Europe. And like, whenever we go to Ireland, Dan has to drive because the only rental cars are a manual transmission. And I can't, I mean, forget you're on the other side of the road than you're used to and the manual transition. And I'm like, that's, that's all you, but I'm, I can't I'm uh, not, kill us. I'm not, I'm not in the cannonball run. <laughs> the <laughs> fuck is going on? I'm going to the goddamn Walmart. I need some Ben and, and Jerry's. People, and people who have manual transmissions have like real attitude about it. They like, do. Like you're a fucking poser because you, like you're not a real car fan. They're the fucking real Star Wars fans of drivers. Like, oh, you have an automatic. Hmm. I like real cars. 
I dated a guy who was like that. He was driving in 1996 Honda Civic and giving me shit because I didn't know how to drive stick. And I'm like, really? Because you're not you're not driving a fucking Fast and Furious model here. I I just want I just want to you know just want to fucking get to work. That's all you know. Yeah, I just want to go to Target. Right. But uh, we have more driver shenanigans, and this one I'm a little more forgiving for of the driver, not so much the driver's mom. It happened again. Dutch boy four take mom's car for a joyride. Haircut. Tell me he has the haircut. What haircut? No, they, they, Dutch they, boy the paint. No, they what? blocked his face out because he's a minor. Oh. You don't remember Dutch Boy Paint? Yes, I remember. It was ridiculous. Yes. But everyone's Googling that shit right now. Uh, police in the city of Utrecht said the, I probably said that wrong. I don't care. Said the child crashed between two parked cars on Saturday before leaving the scene in his pajamas and bare feet. <laughs> concerned, by, um. concerned bystanders called the police after spotting him walking down the street alone in the cold. No one was hurt in the escapade. Um, police wrote the child had woken up on Saturday when his father went to work and had taken his mother's car keys to go for a drive. <laughs> After officers were called to pick him up, a report came in of an abandoned vehicle nearby, which appeared to have hit two parked cars. <laughs> it's registered to the boy's mother, and officers called her. Handing over the phone to the youngster, the police said he mimicked driving and made gestures of turning a steering wheel. The child, described by his mother as resourceful, opened the car with the key, put it in the ignition, and moved his foot to the clutch and gas pedals. <laughs> you gotta watch the fucking kids, man. Can you imagine being this mother and yeah. waking up and your child is gone your and your is car... Gone is gone like i promise you this adorable scenario is not even close to what mom was thinking she was having a fucking nervous breakdown and then the cops called and are like yo we have your son here and he's like and they're like oh my god we think your son stole your car ma'am <laughs> And that people, kid is grounded until he's 40. People are pointing out in the channel it had a clutch, which meant it was a manual. The four year old can drive stick. <laughs> like I said, they're more popular in Europe. <laughs> You've got to watch your fucking. They are. You. Well, is this four year old that he was able to work the pedals? Probably standing Is this four year old? Up. Is this four-year-old Yao fucking Ming? <laughs> Ronan says, it's 3 a.m. Do you know how fast your child is driving? <laughs> You've got to watch, kids. You've got you got, to. Yeah. I, and see, this is, this is why I don't have kids, because you can't fucking sleep with them. Like, they're little, tiny chaos demons. Like, Baby's Day Out? That's a documentary. Yeah, the human brain, I learned this from my husband, the human brain does not even really fully comprehend the concept of consequences until age 25. Yeah. 25. And you're just supposed to have this little fucking demon who doesn't understand consequences living in your house while you sleep. That I, I, I point out, I started smoking when I was 18, so that explains. Uh, just gonna steal your fucking car uh, well next up cat um normally i don't know about anybody else but normally when i see a crime scene i'm like i don't want to be here and i avoid it i mean i may stay at a distance and see watch the lights and shit because you know you're fucking human you rubberneck but if I'm you're Yorker, you try and figure out if it's a real crime scene or if they're filming one of the 50 different versions of Law and Order. But you know what I'm not going to do? 
I, I am not going to wander over to the right to the crime scene and attempt to sell stolen meat. <laughs> I know, right? A man has been arrested for reportedly trying to sell stolen goods to the public while they were gathered at a crime scene in Grimsby. Uh, the man, seen by witnesses with a large variety of meats, <laughs> was spotted trying to sell items on Lincoln Boulevard. Uh, at the time, Humberside police were at the scene of a major investigation where a man was arrested following a 12-hour roof standoff. Following the carnage caused by the tiles and bricks being thrown on the street. So already you have a guy on the roof throwing bricks at people. So shit's not good. Uh, and you think this is the time. Police sealed off to the sell your contraband sausages. <laughs> police sealed off the area and a cordon was put in place. Today it remained in place. While police were at the scene, a man reportedly approached members of the public trying to sell what was believed to be. Stolen meat. I love just that phrase. Stolen meat. That sounds like an album title from the 90s. Um, <laughs> after leaving the area, he returned to the scene and allegedly continued to try and sell the goods. However, he was soon arrested. What the living absolute... What? I just... I want us all to put ourselves in this scenario, right, okay? Right. There's, there's a thing happening. There's like a fucking hostage situation. And for some reason, you have no self-preservation instinct. You've decided to stand and watch right. some right. guy being a face off with the cops. Right. And while you're there engaging in this ghoulish spectacle, mm -hmm. some dude comes up and is like, hey, you want to buy some meat? Hey, oi, oi. You want a sausage? You want a fucking sausage, mate? I've got a sausage in my pocket. Do you want it, mate? Like only who, one quid? Who is buying meat from some rando? Like, there are things I will buy off of randos. <laughs> like, I will buy the fucking Subway churro <laughs> off the lady when I'm in New York. We were, we were sitting in traffic, and there was a lady walking up and down the side of the bridge selling churros. And we really almost opened the fucking window and bought a churro. <laughs> Except we drove past her before we got the chance. But I was a fucking churro out of a stolen shopping cart on the side of the Triborough Bridge. But even better. I'm not saying all contraband food is bad, but me? This is like, like, these are, this is like a rabbit running to the dogs. You have stolen <sighs> meat. And of all the places you could think to unload it, you go to where all the cops are. I don't think you understand the concept of crime. Oh. Yes, there are residential areas where people sell raw eggs to people they know from their own chickens. They, they don't steal them from chickens and right. they go to a crime scene and be like, would you like an egg in this trying my sis, time? My sister-in-law works at H&R Block and in exchange for doing her taxes in such a timely manner, one of her customers was an egg farmer who brought her a bunch of eggs. Okay. But we know the source of the eggs. He didn't pull them out of a trench coat in the middle of the fucking street. <sighs> this is also just a bizarre crime. It is a bizarre crime. But yeah. you know, I, I'm going to show you folks. Like, where did you get all the meat? I know. You don't want it. Don't ask that. Don't, don't ask. What? What kind of meat? This is why you don't buy random meat off strangers. You could okay. be buying their wife. Okay, we're getting a little Sweeney Todd here. Um, I'm just saying. Uh, all right, this next story. If, if there was a crime that summed up, that, that seemed so perfect for a certain place, like the Ur crime for that, that place, it would be this. Because if I had to ask you where this happened, this would be in your top five guesses. Alabama police search for woman on stolen lawnmower who stole Crimson Tide yard sign. 
police in the South. And the picture is just is is glorious. Look at that. She's at least she's wearing a mask. She's like she's well, she's wearing a mask because nobody knows she's doing crime. So she's got a little bit, a little bit of crime smarts. Police in the South Alabama town are searching for a uh, female theft suspect who they say made her getaway on a stolen riding lawnmower. Police in the Escambia County town say uh, they do not know the identity of the woman. But they say the items pictured in a small trailer pulled by the lawnmower are also stolen. The trailer, police say, is also stolen. Police later said they learned her first name but had not located her. One of the items in the trailer appears to be a University of Alabama yard sign. They take their college sports very seriously down there. I just, I, if you could, if like, this is just like perfect. This is like the most Alabama of Alabama crimes. But was it a manual lawnmower? <laughs> This is like an old school country song. Because like now country songs are all about fucking beer and Trump. But yeah. like back in the day, the country songs were like, my, my woman left me. She took my dog. She took my truck. She took my ride on mower. She took my Crimson Tide sign. I mean, if you want to be honest, back in the day, country songs were about being oppressed by uh, the upper class, but but there was also, you know, this John, the breakup genre. And then disco happened and we got rhinestone cowboys and shit got weird. Uh, and now we have Kenny Chesney. Yeah. We don't deserve that. Um, like, it's Jesus fucking. <sighs> She's gotten just this is uh, this is I love how brazen this is. She's like, OK, and it's brought. It's broad daylight. She's collecting shit here. She's got the lawnmower and the trailer and all the stuff in the back of the trailer. She's like, you know what? Let's get to work. How fast do ride on mowers go? Um, I think you can get them up to maybe about 10 miles an hour. Caught her. What? <laughs> Somebody caught her on foot. Yeah. Like, How is she still at large? If there's a riding mower that goes faster than 10, 15 miles an hour, I'd be impressed. You would have to soup that thing up because they're, they're just tiny little things. Like you could have run out of your house on foot and caught her. This is this is like the, the modern version of foraging. <laughs> she will do well in the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> She's lived off the land. In the in the new postmodern way, <laughs> yeah. By the land, we mean her neighbor's house, <laughs> her neighbor's yard, which is technically land. Oh, this night. Okay, this one made me at. This one kind of made me mad. Cause all right, as crimes go, <sighs> this. From the Department of Taking Candy from a Baby. Um, Winnie the Pooh blanket leads to Nashville daycare burglary arrest. A 66-year-old man accused of burglarizing a daycare in an area north of downtown Nashville was taken into custody. According to documents, on April 16th, Jerry Chambers broke a window and climbed into Brighter Day Child Care, located on Ewing Drive, and took several items, including a laptop and a child's Winnie the Pooh blanket. Employees then reviewed, reviewed security footage, and they were asking neighborhood businesses to do the same. They saw the suspect, Chambers, get into a car in a nearby parking lot. Police said a woman confronted Chambers before he ran into the woods. She then allegedly saw the blanket in plain view in the back seat of Chambers' car. Authorities stated they obtained a search warrant uh, uh, and retrieved the, retrieved the victim's blanket from his car. Chambers later identified the photo I am charged with burglary. Okay, the laptop I get. All right, fine. Uh. You're, you're going to be an asshole and steal some shit. The laptop is something you can sell. Why? You stole a six-year-old's blanket. 
Yeah, you stole someone's blankie. What is wrong with you? The, it, the fucker... Are... <sighs> what in the... I mean, I'm going to assume he stole the blanket to conceal the laptop. But still. But, like, on, on levels of karma, the blanket is actually the greater theft. Right, the blanket's worse than the fucking computer. This is a computer. Like, the daycare can get another laptop. Right. You stole a child's blankie. I mean... Jesus Christ, man. That's got to be, if that isn't a moment to make you go, what am I doing with my life? I don't know what is. That rethink your life moment. That's not to say I don't understand how you could end up in a situation where crime is survival. I get it. I get uh, it. You know, you, you got, you got, got, got to eat to live, got to steal to eat. But. The fuck, you're sick. You're almost 70 and you stole a child's blanket. Come on. Like, oh, uh, just c- fucking hell, man. It's not nice. This. What? Well, I. Sh- Winnie the Pooh would be very disappointed. Where's the. I don't understand. Where's the percentage in it? There. Where's the fucking percentage? In the, where. Fucking. What the. Oh my God. I'm just, I'm kind of grumpy about this. Cause you know, when you were a kid, you had your favorite things. They were essential. Yeah. They were goddamn yeah. required. My, like you, I, I, I swear to this is, this is going to sound a little sad. I don't give a fuck. I have some of those essential things out in the storage building and I've got them like double plastic bagged. So they can't, they are preserved and shit. I don't know why. There's no still- favorite doll that my aunt had made for me. Mm-hmm. That is filthy because I used to bring her everywhere that my sisters ripped her head off of and I had to have her head sewn back on. I still have that doll. Yeah, it serves and me. And if no someone p- had stolen that doll, I would have lost my fucking shit. But it literally serves no fucking purpose. It's just taking up space. I'm, I'm not going to do anything with them and I have kids of my own, so I don't know what the fuck. But I'm keeping them because when I was a kid, they were fucking essential to me. Huh. You asshole. How did this? You, oh, and, and the, 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 I guess at least the, the mugshot's like, yeah, and I know, I know that that is the mugshot that says, yeah, I know. All right. Final one this week. And this is the one everyone sent me. And this is, there's a phrase that is used in the world. It's the ugly American. And it's it's the stereotype for what happens when Americans go abroad and blunder around in a very American way. And I don't th- I think this is probably one of the most American of blunderings. Holy shit. Chaos as American family brings unexploded shell to Israel airport. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Israel. I don't know if you've heard of it, but um, they're noted for having some conflicts in and around the area, some skirmishes, some dust ups, if you will. They're a little sensitive about such things. American family caused havoc at Israel's Ben Gurion airport in Tel Aviv. When they tried to transport an unexploded shell through airport security, the tourists found the shell while traveling to Golan Heights. Um, yeah, that's the, yeah. Israel captured the Golan Heights from Syria in a war in 67 and annexed the narrow strip of land in 1991. Area is considered occupied territory under international law and U.S. Security Council resolutions. Upon arrival at the airport, the American travelers declared the shell to airport security at the luggage drop-off and airport staff announced an evacuation. Okay, here's the thing about unexploded explosives. They can still explode. It's not that it's safe, it's that it malfunctioned. There's a difference. You mind from Hot Fuzz? It's just a little, little joke. It, 
And I, I just, yeah, it doesn't mean it's not live. I love it how means it's unpredictable. They find a fucking munition shell. They try to take it home and they think, well, if we just you know, tell them about it, we'll check it in our baggage and we'll fly back to America with a large explosive in our luggage. But they'll know, looks, they'll know, so it's cool. I'm still confused by people that would even think that that's a cool souvenir. Right? Look, honey, I found an unexploded bomb. Cool, let's take it home. I'm just going to go to the gift shop and get a cheesy magnet from my fridge. I don't need or want a bomb. Video circulating on social media shows people panicking, running behind pillars, and cowering on the ground. One person was reported injured in the incident, an Israeli pastor who ran onto the luggage conveyor belt amid the chaos. See, they're used to things blowing up where it's not supposed to blow up over there, and they're a little skittish about it. You'd hop on the luggage thing. <sighs> well, I mean, panic is panic, man. I guess. American travelers. Yeah, I, this is this. I don't get. This drives me. Crazy. The American pair travelers were interrogated by airport authorities, but were subsequently allowed to board their flight. And I think it's not because they thought this is fine. They're like, just get them the fuck out of here. Exactly. Just send them the fuck back to where they came from. Get them the fuck. Please go away. Please just just go. <sighs> Yeah, I don't get people that think that bombs are cool tchotchkes. I this is no, thank you. Fucking hell! Especially bombs from a specifically disputed territory. That is like still a problem. Oh, to say the least. To say the oh, Jesus Christ. Like that's like going to fucking Belfast in the nineties. And being like, oh, my God, I found this thing under my car. <laughs> what a cool souvenir. Like, OK, I don't know. Why, why do we have to tell people to not fuck with unexplored? If you find something like this, you call a cop. And it's one of the few times I actually say you call a cop. Yeah. Because if nothing else, they have all the shit to deal with explosives. When and if and they are causing the somebody, explosions. And somebody trained to, you know. Allegedly. Yeah. Somebody who will just pick it up and throw it in their fucking suitcase on top of their flip flops. You are so fucking lucky to be fucking alive. I, I don't, I don't eat. <sighs> like. You, it's just, oh, just, oh my God. Can you imagine if they didn't tell anybody? One of two things would happen. They would have been caught not telling, and then they would have given a whole lot more trouble, or it would have got onto the plane. Odds are. Mm. Because Americans think that everywhere is America. Yeah. What do we think the odds are that they argued their Second Amendment rights to have it? Um, no bet. Because no bet. we had trucker convoy people in Canada arguing their First Amendment rights, and the fucking Canadian judges were like, no. Wasn't it like, <laughs> wasn't like the First Amendment of the Canadian Constitution is the right to recognize a province or some shit? Something like that, yeah. And they're like, you're, you are lost. <laughs> Uh, says uh, the first thing we've learned it's uh, explosives unexploded does not mean safe no. by any by any med oh my god actually exploded is the safer option yes yes because it's done its thing it's finished yes unexploded very scary we've learned that you know of all the things to steal, a child's blanket. That one's, I mean, I don't believe in hell, but if there was one, you're going there. You're, 
That's like the express ticket. That's like no waiting. That that that's like you're gonna wind up hanging out with Ted Danson in a town that has nothing but frozen yogurt restaurants. That's like the TSA plus of hell, you know? Yeah. You only have to take your shoes off. They'll just send you right on in. Um we've learned that maybe a crime scene is the not the best place to sell stolen goods. Especially meat. Who steals meat? Hey, if you want to get into the fencing stolen goods business, might I recommend not meat? Yeah, who's like electronics? Sure. Yeah. Pokemon cards. Those are real popular. Meat. Who just like meat? A short ass turnaround time on that product. Wheeler, you gotta fucking watch your kids. Like, like they you you might think, oh, he's fine. And then the next thing you know, he's popping the clutch and he's down the street. And he's four. That's major yet. They're like spider monkeys that you hold the legal obligation for. Just get cats. Just get cats. They don't have thumbs. They'll try shit, but they don't have thumbs. And finally, we've learned um, maybe, just maybe, if you can't drive stick, if you can't insure it, you don't even have a valid license. Maybe don't sink three quarters of a million dollars into a car. There are better things to buy. Like, a geez. pretty sweet house for that. I mean, I wouldn't buy a house in Florida. Right. Seriously. Yeah. But like you could have. You could have bought a house. No, you bought you bought a car. That you had that no you then wrecked. Fucking moron. I mean, I, I, I will just look at the picture again. Just to stress. Um, look at where that car is. I want, I want to point that out. In case you missed it the first time. That's a sidewalk. Yeah. That, that's. You're. When, when the tire is doing this. <laughs> yeah. That means the car is no good anymore. Because, uh, cracked axle? Yeah. That is I have cracked an axle. And that's when the mechanic's like, yeah. put her down. Three quarters of a million dollars. Just, just poof. I, I. Why would you buy something that expensive that you can't insure? You might as well ask why Elon bought Twitter and 